All right. Well, I think we're back now. Um, and uh, <laughs> we, uh, for some reason, we have internet problems. But uh, so thanks, uh, Tina, for letting me know we're back on. Sorry, you didn't miss anything because I basically stopped. <laughs> uh, um, it looks like Sharon is saying anyone else using the HCC Wi-Fi may need to log off. So if if you're on the church Wi-Fi tonight here, um, switch to data or something, and that might help us. Um, hi, Perry. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure when I lost you, if it was during the prayer or... Uh, or uh, that, but uh, so we're we're here, and uh, a lot of people are joining us uh, and joining back on again. In fact, it shows we have eleven people online now, which is actually more than eleven people because a lot of places there's two doing it, so two or three, or an entire family or something. So um, Colossians chapter three, verses twelve through seventeen. Um, if we were to go back just a little ways and look at it, um, Colossians chapter 3 through chapter 4 verse 6 is the appeal for Christian living. And uh, the, um, the last uh, week or so, a couple weeks, we've been looking at the root principle of the Christian life and... Uh, Seeking things above, setting the mind on things above, and the motivation for these, and then, uh, whoops, <laughs> I'm stacking things up on top of each other. Uh, guidelines for Christian living, we looked at last week, and uh, even later on got some comments on that one, and uh, the sins of the old life or to be abandoned was one of the big things that we looked at last week. And uh, <laughs> man, I'm really doing a great job here of piling up my things. So tonight we're looking at the virtues of the new life that we need to cultivate. So last week we were looking at the things we need to get rid of, the, the sins and habits and different things that we need to just get out of our life. And and he described it in a couple different ways. He said, put some of them to death. He said, just stop doing some things. And uh, tonight, we're looking at the things that we need to start doing. When you become a Christian, you stop doing a bunch of things and you start doing some new things. And you, you, So you put off the old self and you put on the new self. And so it's... Uh, this, uh, remember, it's kind of um, an expression of like clothing. You just take it, <laughs> just take that off your life. Just take it off. Take off the old ugly clothes, the, uh, the dirty stuff, and put on the new clean garments that Jesus has given us. And, uh, and so that's what, we're, that's what we're talking about tonight. These things that we should be putting on. And uh, the first area that, of things that we want to put on are the things that are expressions of love in verses 12 through 14. And uh, verse 12 is, uh, um, verse 12 is, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Um, this, this reminds me just the way it is. Therefore, when, the way he words this, this uh, verse, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Remember um, who he's talking to here once again. In the book of Colossians, it starts out, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and Timotheus, our, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. 
So, so he's talking to the people that probably Epaphras, or possibly even he, but uh, one of his, one of Paul's disciples went to Colossae, led a whole bunch of people to Jesus, and they started a church. And uh, so he's writing a letter to these people, these Christ followers in Colossae. And here, in, in, the, in the first one or two verses of the book, he calls them uh, saints and faithful brethren in Christ. Here, he, d- he calls them God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Okay, they're God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. You're God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. If you have asked Jesus into your heart, this verse, he's writing this verse to you. And really interesting, he's telling us what our life should look like. We, we should put on, put on the clothing of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So Christians, we've already put on the new self, right? Um, and we battle every day to keep the new self on. <laughs> you know, if we go back to, to verse 10, we, we talked about putting on the new self, but we're doing that. And so he says, to, uh, so in, back in verse 10, he says, put off the old self. Now he's saying, put on the new self. Clothe yourselves with these garments that fit who you now are. Um, just before somebody, uh, just before the service, there was a conversation going here about names and the fact that when we get to heaven, we're going to have a new name. Well, not only are we going to have a new name, but we're going to have all new clothes. Um, because what we're wearing here just isn't going to fit. It's just not going to. It's not going to work. Yeah, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But it's not just a song. That's actually Old Testament. I think that's uh, Isaiah. I think that's from the book of Isaiah, if I remember right. And it, and it's just, uh, and in fact, in just a little bit, we're going to talk about songs in Scripture. Uh, in just a little bit, there's a lot of songs throughout all of Scripture and we, we need to do that. We need to put on these garments. Sometimes the garment of praise is exactly the one we need um, to, to get us going. In fact, I saw somebody... Uh, oh, I guess it was my niece Amy was writing a Facebook post and saying uh, she just she was having a rough day. And the Holy Spirit kept talking to her and she was saying, but I'm looking for a headstone for my dad. What is there to praise God about in this? <laughs> and, and, and going back and forth, she just felt like she was going back and forth with the Holy Spirit, having this conversation that just, and finally she came out with, well, there's a lot of things to be thankful for, even in this. Thankful that my dad is now in heaven rejoicing with Jesus and she came up with a whole bunch of things to praise God for, even in the situation of just a real struggle, picking out a headstone and, uh, and different things. And she said she saw a lot of funny ones, <laughs> um, but she wasn't sure, you know, and she, then she was worried that uh, some of the family would be upset about what she picked. And I'm like, she should... She should know better than that because, uh, you know, she's she's the one that gets to do it. <laughs> so uh, so we um, back in verse five, verse eight, we put to death. We rid ourselves of the old things. Now we bring to life these new things by putting it on. And so Christians chosen of God, holy and dearly loved, holy, set apart by and for God, dearly loved by God. These are just some great terms that Paul puts into this. But then he talks about these five great Christian virtues. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
-hmm. Well, he doesn't, he, uh, that's, that's good, but that's not one of the five that he puts in here, meekness, okay? And uh, meek is absolutely, uh, absolutely awesome quality. Uh, for whatever reason, Paul chose these five to put in the, this verse. Compassion is uh, uh, pity and tenderness expressed toward the suffering and those who just are having a miserable day. <laughs> Or a miserable time. Kindness uh, combines all the ideas. If you and and what I'm when I'm saying this, if you go, what I'm saying is I'm just kind of I'm really quickly. If you go back to the word, the Greek word that Paul actually wrote, okay, and uh, and then trans it. Sometimes words we know sometimes words don't fully translate from one language to another. So I'm trying to give you what the Greek word was, the real definition, a, a finer definition of the actual Greek word, but without going to tell you the Greek word because it's all Greek does anyway, right? Um, but kindness combines the ideas of goodness, kindliness, and graciousness. Um, humility and gentleness he, are two terms they are very related but interestingly here, one of the reasons that he put these two words in, humility and gentleness, is that the pagan world that these Colossian people lived in, the, the world they lived in, humility and gentleness were not highly thought of at all. In fact, they were not a part of the pagan culture at all. And so he threw these in to make sure that, you know what? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you look different. You're wearing different clothes. <laughs> in this case, humility and gentleness. You're wearing clothes that the world around you is not wearing. We're in the world, but we're not part of the world. We're in the world, we're different from the world. And so... So he, he put these in uh, for sure. Uh, just humility is just a humble disposition. In other words, not showing any pride, just being that person that we're supposed to be. Gentleness is the opposite of pride and self-assertiveness. And it's a, a mark of one who has a lot of consideration for the rights and feelings of other people. And 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 meekness um, may be may actually be the uh, some of your maybe some of your Bibles did translate it meekness and maybe that's what you're getting at is that because meekness is uh, this is a great description of meekness in truth meekness it rhymes with weakness right. <laughs> but it is not anything like weakness. In fact, it is great strength. Uh, a meek person uh, may be the strongest person that you ever meet. They very well could be the strongest person you ever come in contact with because they have the ability. They would have everything it takes to destroy you, but they don't. They, they don't do it. And then patience. Uh, oh, and, and another thing about this gentleness or meekness word. Uh, it's a characteristic of Jesus. If you go to Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians five twenty three, And uh, according to Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. It's a distinctive trait of those who belong to him. Matthew 5, 5. Okay, blessed are the meek. <laughs> um, Jesus was uh, talking about those people in, in there. And so patience is the last one. And it's just self-restraint. And uh, it's something you bear insult, injury, and without resorting to retaliation would have been the definition and that one is an attribute of God Romans 2 4 
And it's also a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. So, uh, going on to the next verse, um, and remember, we're, uh, I, I want to remind you again, we're talking about expressions of love in these, these three verses, 12, 13, and 14. And so in verse 13, it says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Um, when I uh, one of uh, one when I when I'm gonna do a wedding, I usually sit down with a couple at least six times. I tell them I've had people come and say, "Hey, Pastor Kim, we're getting married next Saturday. Can you do it?" And I'm like, "Nope, sorry." And and they're like, "What?" Well, um, I require six weeks of counseling. <laughs> And they're like, six weeks? Well, it's really not six weeks every night. It's, but the things we go through during this counseling time, I, I meet like once a week for six weeks. And it's actually a lot better if we can take even longer than that so that you have time to contemplate these things. And, and one of the nights or one of the meetings that I have with these couples, I, I bring up these the verses that I call one anothering verses, and I uh, I have a whole list and ask them to see if my list first of all is complete. But I I say look up and of course it probably needs to be the King James version or possibly not because I'm not reading in the King James version. But this one here it says bear with each other. And in some, it would be bear with one another. <laughs> but even later on, it says, whatever grievances you may have against one another. Okay? So any verse that says one another in it, I, I challenge them to go through the Bible and look for all the one another, one anothering verses <laughs> and see how it is that we're supposed to treat one another. Well, of course, the, the context usually is how, in, in most cases, it's usually how Christians are treating each other. Almost entirely the context of all the one another in verses are how Christians are supposed to treat one another, which we often don't do a very good job of. <laughs> Whoops, did I say that out loud? Oh, man. Wow, I'm really being mean. <laughs> But it's, but it's really, it's, it's an awesome thing. And then I say, I'm going to challenge you during the first, during the first, however, I can't even remember how many one another in verses I give them, but it's, it's quite a few that I actually give them. And I challenge them to see if they can find more. And then I say, then the ones I give them, I say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the first one. And I said, you can start this week and make it the theme of this week. Next week, take the next one. Next week, take the next one. Next week, take the next one. And when you get through all of them, then start over again. And make one, an, one of these one another in verses your theme for the week. And if you'll do that, you will probably have a great marriage. For instance, this one is bear with one another, bear with each other. You know what? When somebody does something to you, and isn't the ones you love, aren't they the ones that hurt you the most? No, oh, shoot. Man, I'm really being mean tonight. Wow. Bear with each other, even if it's, not the greatest day for the person that you're with. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What a, what a great theme for a week for a marriage. What a great theme for a week. What a great theme for a lifetime. <laughs> uh, for a Christian person, bearing with the people around them, that may offend them, that may do something to them, that may 
not be perfect, whoa, um, but bearing with each other, forgiving each other, and forgiving as the Lord forgave you. What, what a great, what a great thing. So uh, that makes forgiveness pretty free <laughs> because we were forgiven freely. So great verse there to, to contemplate uh, and to, uh, to just think about. And verse 14 says, And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. <laughs> so you've got, uh, oh, that's cool. I thought so too. Uh, Perry says Gary is perfect. So she doesn't have any trouble with him. So yeah, that, that makes it, that's awesome. I, I, that, that would be awesome to live with a perfect person. And I found Gary to be right in there. <laughs> so, so you have all these virtues that we talked about, um, and uh, they they were what what were those virtues? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Gentleness, meekness, uh, all of those, and then this bearing with and forgiving, and then to solidify all of those, you top it off kind of like a binding belt or a, or a jacket that just goes over it all and keeps it all in there, love. And not just any love, agape love. And, and there's the first Greek word that I'll say tonight, and that's the love that he's talking about in this one. He's talking about agape love. Well, hmm. There's only one who can really love that way. <laughs> His name is God. But the cool thing is, God can give you the ability to love even when, and, and love in situations where, you know, you can love someone who does not deserve it. Oh, wait a minute. That's all of us. <laughs> um, you, can, you can love because God first loved you. And, uh, and it's interesting that he mentions it as a whole, the way he puts it in this passage is that he mentions it as a whole separate piece of clothing. Um, he, he talks about all those other ones just kind of bunched together. And when he gets to this agape love, it's like it's, like it's, a, it's a bigger covering that holds all those in. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think the first two times it's phileo, brotherly love. Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you agape me? Um, and uh, I've always I've always thought. There, there was a lot of significance to the three times, too. <laughs> um, but there, there's so much there. Peter, do you love me? And, and, you know, possibly God is asking someone that tonight. And uh, it's our opportunity to say, Lord, you know I love you. <laughs> and, uh, and then fulfill that. And so, but he, but he seems to talk about it as... Uh, as a different article of clothing, larger, probably larger than all of the other ones combined, and it really does bring all the other ones together in our lives. And uh, so the next, uh, whoops, uh, the next uh, small section is verse 15. It's the rule of peace. Wow, and most of us need this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. <laughs> and be thankful. Thankful. 
peace. It's peace between us, but it's also peace, an inward peace that only come that only can come from Christ. It's the it's this inward peace that touches our heart, and it's a peace that it, that that rules even in the midst of adversity, even when everything is going wrong. And, and Paul, remember, Paul's writing this from prison. <laughs> he's, he's, he's going, oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm at great. He, he just somehow, sitting there in the prison cell, going to court every day or as they're accusing him of things and he's having his opportunity to present his case before the court and we don't we don't really know if he was going to court every day or if they would bring him in and and uh, just torment him for a while and then send him back to the jail cell for three days once five days the next time seven days the next time you know we don't know how they're treating him and he writes to these people and says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. So it's clear that he's talking about peace between them as believers in Jesus Christ, but it's also clear that he's talking about have peace in your individual heart, in the situation you're in, no matter what, the situation is and the word rule there <laughs> uh, the the definition of that word the the greek word for rule is actually to act as umpire <laughs> so in a baseball game you have an umpire and when an umpire says he's out well now they go to instant replay in the in the Major League Baseball now, which is really interesting. <laughs> but it was, it used to be that when the umpire called somebody out, they were out, and the and the manager, the coach, could come out and argue all they wanted, but it wasn't going to change anything because the umpire had ruled. And uh, so he's saying, let peace rule in your heart no matter what, okay, no matter if you think what's going on around you is right or wrong, let peace rule in your heart because the umpire says you have peace. <laughs> so, so let peace rule is what he's saying. And, uh, and then he finishes up with, and be thankful. Really like that because most of us, um, the, the truth is, it's amazing as I go back to thinking about, I remember I brought up my niece Amy just a little while ago. She's looking for a headstone for her dad, and she's not really thankful about the thing, about the whole day. She's not at peace, but as she became thankful, as the Holy Spirit worked in her heart and she became thankful, she became at peace too. And you can and you can see it as she's writing. She's a really good writer as far as if you if you read through. In fact, if I, you know, I don't want a chance trying to go there and get that and, <laughs> and read it to you. Um, but if I could read it to you, you'd see what a great writer she is and how she just shares openly what was going on in her heart during that that day. And as the Holy Spirit began speaking to her and she was having this conversation back and forth. And pretty soon, Thanksgiving started to come, and pretty soon, peace started to come. And, and they go together, thank, thankfulness, gratefulness, and, and peace just uh, go together. And so, <clears throat> we, we need to be that, that way in our lives. So, um, be thankful always. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. Um, those verses that I tell you every Sunday morning from 1 Thessalonians 5 includes both of those. In everything, give thanks. 
For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Really interesting. And always be thankful. <laughs> so the, the next small section, the indwelling of Christ's word, is verse 16. <clears throat> verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. So, uh, most of the things that, that we've looked at, and virtually all the things that we've looked at, are ways we treat other people so far. This one is uh, more focused on your own personal life. <laughs> this one here. Uh, switches to kind of just right inside. Let, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And uh, I, I've told, I've said it several times. I, I used to read, make sure that I read the Bible through at once every year. I did it for years and years and years, read it through. And then, uh, then they started putting it out in audio form, and I remember I got the, uh, I don't remember how many tapes it was for the entire Bible from Faith Comes by Hearing, but it was a lot of cassette tapes. Speaking of technology, things have really changed. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, you had these uh, cases of cassette tapes, and, uh, and you could listen, you could listen to the Bible. And, uh, then it came out on CD, which uh, made it a lot quicker. And now, I, I don't even know how many versions of the Bible I have on, on my cell phone. I couldn't even tell you. I have no idea how many versions of the Bible that I can listen to. Uh, li literally hundreds of and they're all right here. There are hundreds and hundreds of versions of the Bible, uh, including hundreds, literally hundreds of different languages I, that I can listen to. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's amazing. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. I spend most of... The from just right after I get up in the morning until probably 11.30 or so every day I'm listening to the Bible. Unless I get a phone call or something that stops it, then as soon as I'm off that phone call, I start it again and I get going. And I'm listening to the Bible for several hours every morning. And it's uh, I, I'm trying to make it just dwell in me that and that's the way I pretty much start every day is the Bible is just and I don't have it quiet I have it as loud as the phone will go <laughs> and uh, and sometimes even hooked to a Bluetooth speaker so it's really loud and uh, trying to just let the word of God just go in some days I wonder if it does um, but I know that it does because I know his word will never return void and that it's doing things in my life every day. And, and now because of that, I can, I can uh, listen to the Bible two or three times a year really easy. I can listen to the Bible two times a year without any trouble at all. I can listen to the whole Bible. And uh, I'm even trying something new. Part, part of that listening, I've listened to the Gospel of John <laughs> almost every day, the entire book of John, almost every day for about two and a half months in Spanish. <laughs> I don't understand Spanish at all, but I'm believing someday I will. I figure that uh, if uh, Smith Wigglesworth could learn to read and write from just studying the Bible, 
I should be able to learn. And it's amazing how much more I'm hearing. I really, every time I listen to it, I'm picking up other words. I'm realizing, oh, yeah, he's he's talking about the wedding feast. He's talking about, in, and now we're in John 17, and he's he's that's the prayers of Jesus. And I, and so I'm, I'm picking out things that are happening. And I'm starting after two and a half months, it's starting to, things are starting to click a little bit here and there. And uh, it's the word of God. And according to all the missionaries that are in Spanish speaking countries, it's the language that we're going to hear in heaven. Um, <laughs> they, almost every missionary that that is in a Spanish speaking country says it this is this is the language of heaven. It's it's amazing how so many of them have told me that uh, Spanish is the language that we're going to be and I, and I I don't think so cuz I think it'll be whatever language God has but I'm not sure that's what it'll be. Yeah, I don't know. Um chemo actually. No. Um but it's But it's uh, it's it's really uh, and then since we've been doing the book of Colossians, just to let you know. So I'm listening through the Bible, and I'm back. I'm actually quite a ways through the book of Exodus again. <laughs> I started at Genesis and Exodus, so I so I listened to my six or so chapters going through the Bible, which gets me through about twice each year by listening to six chapters every day. Then I listen to the book of John, Juan, <laughs> in uh, Spanish. Then I switch to the King James Version and and listen to, then I listen to the entire book of Colossians every day since we've been doing this study in Colossians. And... Uh, so I don't even know now how many times I've listened to the book of Colossians lately. But it's but it's really cool too. And and you think, wow, you but you've heard it so many times before and but it, this is the living word of God. And it and it's got stuff every day, even if you heard it yesterday, even if you heard it the day before. Even if you heard the same thing, and I, I know that I've listened to the whole Bible or read the whole Bible, I, my guess is at least 50 times. And every time there's something new. And that's just the way the Word of God is. So let it dwell in you. That's a, that's a long time to say, let it dwell in you richly. <laughs> um, with all wisdom... So, so it'll teach you and counsel you. And then, uh, boy, I don't know. We're going a long time tonight. This is way longer than usual. Sorry. I mean, sort of. Not really. Uh, <laughs> Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Um, not sure that, I mean, there, the Psalms definitely, you know, David wrote a lot of Psalms. There's Psalms uh, in, uh, so we have the Old Testament Psalms. Then there's hymns. And spiritual songs that are uh, just just great stuff. But there's a lot of songs through the Bible. Songs, uh, um, and I won't. I'm not even going to touch them all. You're going to have to listen really quick, <laughs> really hard to hear this. Songs in the Gospels, the Song of Mary in Luke one forty six through fifty five, the Song of Zechariah in Luke one sixty eight through seventy nine. The Song of the Angels at the Birth of Jesus in Luke 2.14. The Song of Simeon in Luke 2.29-31. The Song of the Crowds on Palm Sunday, Matthew 21.9, Mark 11, 9 and 10, Luke 19.11 and John 12.13. It's in all four Gospels. The Song of the Crowds. Um, in, the, in the New Testament letters, the doxology to God in Romans 11, 33 to 36. The hymn of love, 1 Corinthians 13, right? The wake up song, Ephesians 5, 14. The hymn, 
to the human and divine Jesus in Philippians 2, 6 through 11. The hymn to Jesus as Supreme Lord in Colossians 1, 15 through 20. The hymn on the life of Jesus, 1 Timothy 3, 16. And then another section of songs, the songs of Revelation. How about that? Song of the Four Living Creatures, Revelation 4, 8. Song of the 24 Elders, Revelation 4, 11. And then 11, 17, and 18. Song of the Four Living Creatures and the 24 Elders in Revelation 5, 9, and 10. Songs of the Many Angels, Revelation 5, 12, and 13, and 7, 12. Song of the Great Multitude of Saints, Revelation 7, 10, and 19, 1 to 3. Song, songs of the Loud Voices in Heaven, Revelation 11, 15, 12, 10 through 12, and 19, 5. Songs of the Seven Angels, including the Song of Moses and the Song of the Lamb, in Revelation 15, 3 to 4, and 6 through 8. So there, there's a lot of songs. That's just songs in the New Testament. And there's a lot of them. And then, so that, so, so singing <laughs> songs, singing has been a part of Christianity since before the beginning. Because <laughs> um, we also, you know, if you go into the Old Testament, you have the song of Moses, you have the song of Miriam, you have, and, and you have the entire book of Psalms, which are songs mostly that David wrote, um, but other ones too. And then as we move on into this last verse that we're going to look at, the name of Christ. And, and so um, rem remember this whole thing is virtues of the new life are to be cultivated and uh, one of the virtues that we can have is uh, living in the name of Christ and so it says whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him and uh, so Paul kind of gives this this summary of the way to live for Jesus. It's do it in the name of Jesus. In other words, if you can't do it in the name of Jesus, don't do it. <laughs> and uh, do what you do do in the name of the Lord. And it reminds us of our dependence on the Lord for everything we do. It's, our, it's a reminder of this recognition of the th authority of the name of Jesus. Um, it uh, takes us the... There's a... Another a way to look at it is that when we're doing this in the name of the Lord Jesus, we're doing it as followers of the Lord Jesus. So uh, we, we need to be doing that. And then guess what? Giving thanks. Again, <laughs> is put in there. Giving thanks. Uh, so it reminds us of that. This... Uh, Giving thanks is so essential to the Christian life, to our Christian walk. We, we need be thankful always. I, there's just so many places. Paul writes that over and over and over and over. If you think about it, he is constantly reminding us to be thankful, to be grateful. And we need to be those people living in that, that gratefulness and living the way that we should live. And so um, these, these virtues of the Christian walk, the Christian life, are things that we are supposed to put on. <laughs> and so I just encourage you tonight to put on Jesus and uh, do the things, live, live our life in the name of the Lord Jesus as followers of him. So thanks for being with us tonight. Have a great rest of your week. And see you Sunday. Oh, by the way, Sunday, just so everybody knows, there's going to be two services Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night at 6 o'clock. So Sunday morning at 1045, Sunday night at 6 o'clock. 
Uh, Ernie Salinas is going to be with us this week. He comes, uh, I think we've had him the last Sunday of January for a lot of years in a row now. <laughs> He's an evangelist. I believe in the work of the evangelist. And so we have one or two evangelists come and speak to us every year. So he will uh, be with us uh, this this Sunday again. All right. So have a great week. Thanks, Tala. Thanks, everybody, for being here.